First of all, uh, it's incredibly interesting listening to, uh, I suppose, experts at different points in the debate discuss it with, with each other, and in many ways, uh, us listening to that more uh, perhaps will be useful. But I suppose where we can contribute to the debate as public representatives is our experience of dealing with uh, the general public. Uh, there was a lot of talk at the beginning of this pandemic around flattening the curve, a well-understood concept, a well-communicated concept. Um, but when we got to the end of flattening the curve, I don't think we've had the conversation with the Irish people about at what point we want to plateau. Uh, you look at the United States, it's very clear that they're plateauing at a very high rate, perhaps an unacceptable rate. You look at Ireland uh, and Scotland, uh, I think, which are being, have a much more conservative approach, and then you look at New Zealand. Um, and it, I think we have to yet have that debate uh, mm. with the public. Because even at the height of the pandemic, with the uh, debate around uh, flattening the curve, there were people who clung to the rules, who wanted more rules, and there were those who were willing to ignore them. And I have noticed in the last week or two, increasingly, uh, different shades of opinion, some even saying they don't really believe that this pandemic is real. Now, I think it's very clear that the pandemic is real and is having real impacts on people's health, on people's lives. But it demonstrates how we need to bring the public with us in whatever debate uh, we have. And so, can I first of all ask uh, Professor Staines, at this point in, in, in the six uh, uh, recommendations which you have about how we get to Zero Ireland, uh, a previous speaker said, really it's about a more stricter implementation of what we currently have. For example, the communication around hand hygiene, social distancing, the now increased use of masks in, indoors, um, the Minister's commitment yesterday that we'll sustain the level of track and, uh, and tracing, the closure of some counties um, and prevent, preventing travel, the instruction by government to have non-essential uh, foreign travel, but at the same time leaving that to the individual's discretion. In many ways, Ireland is pursuing the strategy which, 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 you're, which you're outlining. But am I right in saying that you would like to see that plateau at a lower level, but in many ways we've made that decision now to try and be as conservative as possible? Thank you very much, Deputy McCall. Uh, from, from my perspective, we're trying to do something very difficult. We're trying to live with this virus, and the government has articulated that policy, I, I think, very clearly. But it's very difficult. It's very, very difficult to keep the number of cases at 20 a day, 30 a day, the likely outcome is that we will have periodic flares, as we have seen in Kildare, Leash and Offaly, and as we are likely to see in other parts of the country. And the, the end game really for that is this continues until such time as a vaccine becomes available. Hopefully a vaccine will be available by the middle of next year. But as Mr. Brown has articulated, if a vaccine never becomes available, we have to think about this differently. But I, I am optimistic that there will be a vaccine in the not too distant future. The problem with that is that from a businessman's perspective is that you never quite know. There was Hotelier and Kildare interviewed, small family owned hotel, who'd bought in 8,000 euros worth of food for an event at the weekend, all of that money is now gone. And that's a very substantial hit for that person and their business. It becomes very difficult for businesses to make plans, particularly in the kind of small family run businesses, which make up a large part of employment, both in urban and rural Ireland. So businesses crave some level of certainty. The other side to it is that in terms of opening schools, what do we do if we say, for example, open the schools in Clare, as, as we fully intend to do at the beginning of September, and then a week later there's a lockdown in Clare, when hopefully there won't be, but what do we actually do with the schools? The lower the circulation of virus in the community, the safer the schools are. I suppose the basic point is that low level circulation of this virus is like a fire in the wall of your house. It's, 
It's very hard to confine it to one small area of a wall. It's likely to spread unpredictably. Bringing it down to zero, which is, as, as you've described it, it is an intensification of the measures we're currently taking. We would advocate for at least discussion of the idea of green zones. And Professor, Prof Professor Staines, um, on the county travel, for example, um, at, at the moment, given the incident levels in Dublin, for example, would you close uh, travel for people living in Dublin? Probably not, no. It, do, it doesn't make sense particularly to do this in a haphazard way. It makes sense to do this as part of a clear national strategy, and you put your finger on it. It's to have the dialogue with the Irish people and for the government who, who, who are elected. I'm not elected. Nobody elects me to be here talking to yourselves. You are elected. So it's to have, it's just to have that conversation and see if people feel persuaded by the argument we have put forward and then to implement it. The big difference between what we are doing right now and what we are suggesting is the addition of restrictions on travel across county boundaries. So given the current numbers, Professor Jones, which counties other than the three which have been locked down would, would, you, would you lock down? You, I wouldn't lock down any counties. I, I think locking down is the wrong way to think about this. What you're trying to do is to turn this from a national epidemic which is what we have at the moment, into a series of local epidemics which you can kill off one at a time. And as you kill them off, life opens up in the areas that you've killed off, but people can't freely come into those areas from other parts of the country. So you... So for example, today we had representatives from the constituencies impacted by uh, the three constituencies where there are measures. Uh, w w would you regard uh, it okay for them to travel outside of the, uh, outside of their affected county? Or, for example, I met a woman yesterday who was from uh, Port Leash. She works in Dublin and she travels each day to Dublin. Would she be permitted uh, to travel? Would somebody who is returning to a sick relative in another part of, in another county would they be permitted to travel? I think this comes back again to the idea of non-essential travel. If you need to travel for work, you need to travel for work. That's essential travel, from, from my perspective. If you can work at home, you don't need to travel for work, so it becomes non-essential travel. If you need to care for someone, um, the, I would argue that's essential travel. This is not about having the guards standing back to back and arm to arm linked around the borders of the counties. Even if we wanted to do that, we couldn't do it. This is about saying to people in the counties, do you need to travel? And if you do need to travel, off you go, and the blessings of God on you. But if you don't need to travel, don't. Stay in your county. And what that it lets us do is it, re, it lets us pick off the epidemic in pieces. I, I have to say, President, I'm sort of straining to see how yeah. that differs from the current strategy, which talks about holding firm and caution among the general population, and then quite severe local restrictions in, in each county that's impacted. I, yeah, I think you get less severe restrictions across all the counties. It, it doesn't necessarily have made, it's never made huge sense to me, for example, that pubs that serve food are open or were allowed to open, pubs that didn't serve food weren't allowed to open. So you, you have risk-based assessments. If in a particular county, cases start spreading wildly, then you take more drastic action. But because you're doing it at county level and you're doing it with a purpose in mind, you're, you're not saying, well, this week we're closing Kildare, next week we're closing Donegal, the week following we're closing Galway. You're, you're not playing, if you like, whack-a-mole with outbreaks of the virus around the country. You, we are trying I wonder, to get could Professor Hannigan uh, come in? The chairman's just indicated. I just have 30 seconds left, but yeah. 